Share with you a story that um, I heard from Pema Chodron that I really liked a lot. And she describes this uh, 15-year-old Hispanic guy from Los Angeles, and he had grown up in a violent neighborhood. And um, he had an attitude. He was the kind of guy that, you know, he pushed people around and uh, kind of like had a chip on his shoulder. And um, he was just rough. He had this like, I'm the baddest guy in town kind of attitude. So he was sent to Boulder, Colorado for the summer to give him a break, hopefully have a nice time in the Rocky Mountains where these folks that were involved with Shambhala and Chogyam Trungpa, the Tibetan teacher, gathered. And that's how she got to know him. So here's what she says. She says, one day he came to an event where Trungpa was, um, at the end of the event, he sang the Shambhala anthem. Now this was an awful experience for the rest of us because for some reason he loved to sing the Shambhala anthem in a high-pitched, squeaky, and cracked voice. (laughs) This particular event was outside. As Rinpoche sang into the microphone, the sound traveled for miles across the plains, and this young boy, his name is Juan, broke down and started to cry. Okay, this is the moment. Everyone else was feeling awkward or embarrassed, but Juan just started to cry. Later he said he cried because he had never seen anyone that brave. He said, that guy, he's not afraid to be a fool. So that turned out to be the turning point because he realized he didn't have to be afraid to be a fool either. In other words, all that persona and that chip on his shoulder that was kind of covering over his soft spot, he could let them go. And this guy was sharp and bright and he got the message and he's, he got his education, now he's back in L.A. helping other kids. So I find that story really powerful. Because deep down we are afraid of embarrassing ourselves, of not looking good. And the degree of freedom that's possible when we stop using our energy to appear a certain way and just let our naturalness be there and the possibility of really discovering true peace and okayness and belonging when we're ourselves is such a beautiful invitation. That guy is not afraid of making a fool of himself. That is bravery. So what we do is we start to get to know the vulnerability. And we're really trying to sense if you can be fully inside the most vulnerable part of you. We're really asking, well, what's life like from, the experience, from this experience in here? What's the beliefs and feelings of that vulnerable place? The beliefs are usually something in the lines of, I'm unsafe, I'm going to be rejected, I'm not going to be loved. It's not okay. And the feelings could be shame, fear, squeeze, sometimes grief, like there's already a loss and there's a grieving of it. Now, the more wounding there's been, the more the defenses, but no matter what level, the key in beginning to loosen the identification with the scales is attend and befriend, is bringing a gentle, curious, forgiving attention. Mm -hmm.